Uh, so tell me about your career. You did this one this. My, uh, my dynamic dojo uh, button as you speak. Well, and it looks great. What, you did a movie, Gong Pao, Enter the Fist. I consider that, because of the longevity, almost iconic the way it is. Uh, tell us about your project and how it came to be and your ideas. Uh, that, you know, that was, <laughs> that was probably me uh, primarily as a kid watching uh, uh, Flying Guillotine, uh, certain Bruce Lee movies, but but definitely the ones that would uh, push probably some of uh, uh, Yen Wo Ping's early work, where it was just pushing the envelope on action and drama, where it was almost a comedy, you know. And and uh, I think I always looked at uh, the chop sake world that way. So early in my film career, I wanted to do, I wanted to stick myself in a. That's how I always tell me I'm gonna stick myself in an old Hong Kong movie one day. So when I got the time. I had to literally just scan old. I knew I had to get something off the beaten path. So there's a film called uh, Savage Killers uh, or Tiger and Crane Fist, depending on the territory. And I just liked the the character base in there, so it was a mashup. I took the film, split it up in the editorial desk, wrote my own story, and uh, ultimately stuck myself in it. Wow. How? What was the? What was it like, time frame wise, start to finish? Because you had a lot from that movie that you chopped up and put together. It was probably, you know, it was a big hunk of time finding the film. Once I had the film, it was a hassle trying to get the negative transferred to HD because it was such an old, I literally had to buy this from Mr. Wong in Hong Kong, you know, the film itself. And then when we got that up, I was probably at the editing desk for uh, not that long. It was like two or three months maybe at the edit desk creating the script. Basically, and that's when I was scratching at all these voices and ended up being the final voices. So, like, the beginning of Evil Betty was like, hmm, Evil Betty. I was literally just messing around with the mic, and then all those lines ended up being the final voices. So I, that's how I ended up voicing all the characters. It was, at first, I was just scratching it in. I thought we were going to have different actors later, you know. Wow, that's true. You know, I met a lot of your actors uh, at the screening at the uh, Mars Lead History Museum. Uh, how many actors did you actually have? Because there was so much film that you used for from the past. There weren't that. It wasn't too too many actors. No, it was me. Uh, Jennifer Tung was actually cast, and and uh, and then a, a pack of uh, of our uh, of, of all the, everybody I met in this role, all my stunt guys that were actually actors in the film. But primarily, the main cast is all from the. You know, 25 years old or somewhere in Hong Kong. You know, it was uh, it was really just pulling from the people that were in the old footage, and then I would body double everybody. Uh, we rebuilt the sets in Rosarito, Mexico, and we body doubled everyone. So when you see me from this side, it's me with our sets and body doubles. When you uh, and over a body double shoulder, when you see me from behind, it's the old film. It's Jimmy Wang Yu. Uh, and you know it's not me, so the whole thing's like a, totally a puzzle. Or it was uh, green screen with my face, my head replacing his head in some shots. Now, Steve, you were telling us about the budget. This was very, very low budget for you. What was the budget like, and how did and did you work within it? Did you go over the budget? How did it work? We were no, we were we were a, a nine million dollar film, which now could be even done for less. But at the time, everything was still film. It was it wasn't as much HD shooting. So it would be more streamlined now. But every, most of it was uh, a post-production effects because I'm fighting a cow. You know, the, we have a baby that fights. So we had we, it was a, it was a, it's a puzzle. It's like we had footage we shot. We shot about half the movie, about half the movie's older footage. But every single shot had to get hit digitally because we had to restore the old footage and we had to dumb down our new footage to match it. So there isn't a shot that didn't go through an effects process. So. That was really where most of the budget went, you know, about a six-month post. But the rest of it was pretty fast. Now, if anybody's ever seen this movie, it was it was funny, baby rolling down the hill. Uh, you were talking about PAs running up because the baby would stop because of a rock or a tree. Uh, now, tell us about your early career, though. I mean, you were on Star Search. Was that where it started? Or, or where did it actually start? Well, I, I had stand-up comedy for like 13 years. And by really, I always must want to make movies. So about five five years into that, I started shooting uh, anything. I'd just get equipment, shoot. It was not as sophisticated as now, where I can, you know, I could go shoot a movie with this thing, you know. So it's like it's back then. You really had to be thirty five millimeter film. You needed you needed uh, you know 
money just to get through process, you know. So it's uh, that was really my, my career was started as an independent filmmaker, but then I got sucked into the studio system. I think the first round was when I wrote Nothing to Lose, and there was like a bidding war in the script. I was going to make it independently, you know, but uh, then I got pulled in. I was a screenwriter, and that turned into directing and, you know, Bruce Almighty and Ace Ventura movies, Nutty Professor, Patch Adams, all that stuff. And then I went over and did animation uh, with Jimmy with Nickelodeon, Jimmy Neutron, Barnyard, because I love that world too. But my real affinity was for things like Thumbs. We did our little Thumb projects, Thumb Tannic, Bat Thumb, and Kung Pao. You know, that's sort of like that's sort of like me as a kid watching Python. You know, for the audience that that digs those uh, those projects. You know. Now you mentioned now nobody knows a, a lot about you, but some of the projects you named were. What? Nutty Professor, Ace Ventura, uh, Bruce Almighty. Now, what was? Did you write those? Yeah, either uh, depending on the film, it was either write, um, write or direct or produce, depending on what it is. Like Ace Ventura Two, I wrote and directed. Nothing to Lose, wrote and directed. Uh, uh, Bruce Almighty uh, screenplay, Patch Adams screenplay, Tom Shadyac directed both of those. So it varied. Uh, picture to picture and some of them I produced uh, so it, it's sort of all over I, I always pick a project just because I like it you know and uh, the tones are all a little different too you know in terms of the type of comedy now what was your because I watched so much Jimmy Neutron when, when my kids were kids what was your what was your uh, uh, what was your uh, project with them what did you do for Jimmy Neutron Jimmy Neutron was uh, I I had was a big fan of CG before anybody knew what it was uh, CG animation because believe it or not it's not that long ago uh, when no when it wasn't being used all animation was 2D uh, so Jimmy was uh, two guys out of Dallas I saw it in a, a lightweight 3D magazine this little Johnny Quasar character that was uh, they had done like a 15 second short or something. But I liked the I liked this kid and his robot dog, and then he was a kid inventor. So I hooked up with those guys, and we sort of you know brainstormed out what ultimately became uh, Jimmy Neutron. It was John Davis and Keith Alcorn, uh, and then we we ended up doing the. I took them into Nickelodeon. They had si- I think they had six people at their company at that point, uh, and Dallas, and uh, they flew out. We went to Nickelodeon. Next thing you know, we had the series and the and the movie. Wow. Now. There, there's Nickelodeon's all over. Where did you have to actually go? Did you have to go to the New York headquarters and pitch it? No, Nick. Uh, they are also out in L.A. They're based out of New York, but they. Ha- uh, so at the time, I had met Albie Hecht, who is based out of New York, but Albie Hecht, who was running Nickelodeon at the time, met him uh, in L.A. You know, and then oh got connected through to Barnyard, which uh, was an old idea I'd had. So I wrote and directed Barnyard, which was our next uh, feature and then series on Nickelodeon. That's so so strange, Steve. You have done more than anybody could hope for in the industry. I mean, you have had this career that has spanned uh, ten lifetimes, as far as I'm concerned. We are live at Dragon Fest 2015. Thank you, Steve. We are live on Dynamic Dojo Talk Radio.